Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Off The Print. Before we start our program, I'd like to wish all our viewers a happy new year 2022. Uh, today is a very special program because I'm privileged to be seated with the chief editor of Daily Mirror, Mr. K. Sarabe Wardana, and the business editor of Daily Mirror Business, Mr. Indika Sakalasuria. K. Sarabe Indika, thank you so much for joining me on the program. It's been a bit of a happening year. 2021 has started off with a blast and it seems to be ending with a blast uh, where health is concerned, where politics is concerned and now where the economy is concerned. What's your take on the whole, whole year? Well, uh, for the government, I think uh, the, the year started on a high note. Uh, they were coming in from an election year yeah. and uh, they had secured two-thirds majority, in, almost two-thirds majority in parliament and uh, with the help of several other uh, MPs, they had actually got two-thirds uh, for various bills and all. Yes. And uh, they had successfully tackled the first wave of the COVID epidemic. Right. And uh, the people had confidence in the government and it was uh, shown during the election. And uh, I think they had so much of confidence in this government that they smashed all the records, right? Yes. Uh, because in the general election, what I remember is Mahinda got, Mahinda Rajapaksa got polled in as the highest individual yeah. votes, followed by Nama Rajapaksa yeah. and then, you know, a few others. So their popularity was quite high when they and came in. And also it was like, uh, it was quite remarkable because uh, uh, under the proportional representative system, uh, it, this the election victory was something that was uh, unimaginable yes. for most people. So they were coming from a high, a high note. And uh, like what you said, they started off with a bang. And uh, since then, I think things have not uh, worked out as it would, should have been. And uh, by the end of the year, things look quite disappointing for most people. Right, right. Indika, uh, I mean, I'm seated with you at a very, very crucial time. The public is up in arms uh, over the soaring cost of living. Uh, people are finding it very difficult to actually uh, meet out their daily expenses. Uh, we didn't have this probably last year. In 2020, we didn't have such a bad situation. Uh, how, what happened? Yeah, I wish I could also start saying that, you know, uh, we started with a bang in terms of economy, but it, it wasn't the case. Yes. Because, you know, the, the, what, what, what is happening now, it's been happening for the, for the last seven, eight years. So yeah. what, what, what we are seeing is the, you know, the real outcome of it. So, the, as you said, uh, the, the people are finding it very difficult to afford their food, medicine and all that. Now, we are in a, we are in a big mess in terms of foreign exchange. So, that, that situation is, I, unfortunately, I don't see any real measures being taken to address the situation. So, the situation is getting worse by the time we are speaking. So, to 2021 is a very, uh, I would say, it's a kind of a disastrous year yeah. in terms of the economy for Sri Lanka. But Kesara, you know, um, when we speak to those in charge in government, uh, whenever we raise issues as to why we are in such dire straits at the moment, um, the excuse given is that we are just coming out of a global pandemic. Uh, do you think, both of y'all, I mean Indika and Kesara, y'all have come with so much of experience. Do you all think that the COVID-19 alone uh, is responsible for the situation that we are in at the moment? Well, uh, the pandemic is a reason I, it is. Uh, the thing is, uh, well, like the, the president uh, met uh, the uh, editors this week and uh, in the meeting also what he said was uh, all the plans he had and whatever his uh, main projections he could not uh, implement or put into action because uh, the, the main challenge he faced soon after the election was the pandemic which was uh, totally unforeseen. Yeah, so, correct, because uh, November 2019 he won the election yeah. and by December 2019 we had detected the first case in China and yeah. by March we had our first case here. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, although, although the pandemic is a is one factor. Uh, I think uh, the government also has uh, sort of uh, served too much on the plate, uh, okay. especially 
things like the fertilizer issue, yes. which was uh, actually of the government's own making. Yes. And uh, something that many people think should not have been touched yeah. at a time when we were facing a pandemic and uh, the country is not in a normal situation. So the present uh, probably uh, the high prices in vegetables and other agricultural goods are arising to a certain extent from, the, uh, from those, those decisions. issues. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think these decisions were quite uh, ill-timed and weak? Uh, because we, like you said, we were just, we are just, in fact, coming out of this scenario of the yeah, pandemic. In, in, a, in a pandemic situation, I think such, uh, they should not have uh, touched such controversial issues at such a time. And uh, it should have been given much more time to, uh, to be implemented, Correct. not overnight. Correct. So uh, things like that, I think, has contributed to this situation. So it's not... One, one main factor is the pandemic, that's uh, no doubt it's, uh, it's, it's one of the main factors. But then, there are so many other things that have contributed to it. Okay, Sir Indika, uh, we'll be right back. We're just going to go in for a short break, we will be right back. Sir Indika, just before we went in for a short break, uh, we were talking about the soaring cost of living and the weak decisions of the government. Okay, Sir, I'm going to start off with you. Uh, in your previous answer, you said that the government came in with a huge majority. They came in with a bang. But unfortunately, people are disappointed with uh, some of the decisions they've taken. Um, do you think from last year, that is uh, 2020, to this year, 2021, the Rajapaksa popularity has uh, drastically dropped? Uh, definitely. Uh, I mean, uh, people, the thing is, uh, when for people, once the the economic situation is not doing well and uh, uh, the cost of living is very high in, and it's difficult to find uh, money to buy their food. Uh, the first thing they start blaming is the government. So, yes. And uh, this government is synonymous with the Rajapaksa family. So uh, definitely the popularity it must be dwindling. And, uh, but the thing is, although that's the case, uh, on the other hand, I don't see uh, a huge popularity for the opposition to gaining. Okay. To a certain extent, the JVP is making some uh, inroads into that. Uh, that is there, and within the government ranks also, yeah. the frustration uh, is quite apparent uh, from certain statements that ministers make. Yes. There are so many contradictions. Yes. Uh, there seems to be no unity amongst the government ranks, especially amongst the cabinet ministers. Right? Yeah, there is so much uh, uh, different opinions being made, yes. and uh, recently, three government ministers went to courts uh, over the Yuga Dhanavi uh, share transfer issue. So uh, likewise, uh, there's a lot of contradictions within the government and uh, we should see how it plays out within this year. So, Do you think the Rajapaksas are losing their touch? Because they were quite popular amongst the masses, especially in the South. But do you think they're losing their touch now? Uh, I don't know whether they are losing their touch, but, uh, but I mean, issues that are facing the common man and it is actually their base, their very base that is uh, at the moment uh, taking the brunt of these economic yes. issues. So, and also the fertilizer issue. I think the main support base of the Rajapaksas and the present government was the, the farmers and the rural uh, population. Yes. So, and they are the worst hit with this uh, fertilizer issue. So, how it will play out remains to be seen. Indika, Rajapaksas were quite popular even amongst the business community because after the Maitri Ranil combination, people wanted a change. And uh, people had this hope that if the Rajapaksa brothers come back, the businesses will bloom um, and development will, uh, will ha happen in the country. Um, but unfortunately, we are not seeing that happening at the moment. What is, what's the feeling you get from the business community? Uh, the, the opinion of the business community was uh, communicated about uh, almost two weeks back okay. when the Ceylon Chamber issued a 
uh, statement right. about the current uh, foreign exchange crisis. Okay. So there they clearly mentioned their, you know, uh, the, the country situation and their dissatisf dissatisfaction about the whole, uh, the way these guys are handling the economy, the, right. the, the way they are managing it. So let me go back to where we stopped. Now, about the tax cuts, Okay. right? So the, the, the tax cuts, the, the idea behind it was, okay, uh, with the tax cuts, the economy will expand because people will have more money and they will spend and be, uh, uh, that will uh, uh, make our economy grow. That was the idea. But it, it rarely happens that way, especially with the pandemic, yeah. no chance. So that is what happened. So, the current uh, uh, foreign exchange crisis, the government will have to take a decision very soon as to what we can do because the limited are very the, the options are very limited. Okay. It's very very limited options we have. One is okay. You you can you can try and you know uh, sell some of the assets that we have, which the government is at the moment trying to do. Okay, but that won't go well with the public, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Because uh, it's quite contrary to the uh, image that this government uh, yeah. presented when it uh, came yeah. in. And uh, and also, the Prime Minister especially, right throughout has been mm. a person mm. who is more identified with national uh, nationalizing yeah. and... They were uh, against privatization, yes. so yeah. uh, there's yeah. no way that they can, you know, uh, dispose these assets. But it has come to that. It has come what do you to think that. they'll do now then? We uh, need to survive. We need to get yeah. our forex back, <laughs> back the, in. Yes. You know, back in shape. The only we solution. We need to come out of this. The only solution I can see at the moment is okay. Uh, the government can try to get some inflows, either from you know friendly countries or some big big ticket investments from you know some global companies, which very unlikely to happen overnight Correct. right so the other option is going to the IMF going to the IMF and which they're saying no at the moment yes. because that's what the central bank governor is yeah. uh, insisting upon yes the governor has been insisting on that on uh, not going to yeah. the IMF yeah. for yeah. a bailout yeah. but yes. the thing is uh, that's one of the main options available at the moment but yeah, that, that too will take a long the, time at the yes. moment probably the only option yeah. that we have available yes yeah yes. so I think it's uh, because and also you have to remember that okay, if you go to, if you decides to go to uh, IMF today, you won't get money tomorrow. Yeah. Right. So it's a negotiation process. So you have to negotiate and you have to come up with a program. You have to convince the IMF to fund us to come and bail out us. So that takes uh, that takes, takes, takes several time. months. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it takes it's, time. It's, it's not a. And also, if you're if you're trying to restructure your debt, yeah, you have to convince your uh, investors. So you have to um, get the IMF to convince the investors. So it's a long and arduous process. Process, correct. So you, at uh, least we should start now. That's my take. Yeah. You spoke about friendly countries. I mean, yeah. Kesara, when we started in 2019, uh, we insisted, the Sri Lankan government insisted that they will maintain a neutral foreign policy. Uh, but they seem to have now fallen off even with countries like China, who the Rajapaksas at one time were extremely close to. So who are they going to go to now? I mean, like Indika said, IMF seems to be our only option now because we cannot even turn to people like China. Yeah. It's, I think it's quite ironical because uh, China was uh, seen uh, yes. as a, uh, very close with the Rajapaksa very and close especially ally of with the, the Prime Minister. Yes. And uh, uh, I think again, again these issues okay. were things that should not have happened now. The fertilizer yeah, ship. shipment issue, yes. Yes. which I think had le has led to a certain straining of relationships with China. With China, uh, yes. Something that should not have happened. And uh, yesterday, the president too actually said, if when it was questioned about this issue, he himself admitted that they should have tested the fertilizer before the LC was open. Of course, because, because that is usually, Indica, I mean, correct yes, me exactly, if I'm wrong, exactly. but in international trade, 
you have to yeah. first if it, if it's tested and approved only you can place your order can't yeah. you it was a very and it should have been tested yes. here yeah. yes. tested here before the lc was opened of course. because in international trade once a lc open i mean if you default it then it's a big crisis of course you should not default an lc once the lc is open then uh, you have to uh, honor it so Anyway, this 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 so sort of so uh, did the president sort of mention that the blunder may have happened by his agriculture <laughs> minister himself? Yeah, it's uh, within the government ranks it has happened. So, but unfortunately, nobody is uh, admitting uh, their 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 fault. Yes, that's that's the that's a problem, and uh, things like that actually has contributed in a negative way uh, to international relations as well. Right. So. Like what you said, I mean, they started off with uh, in high spirits, and it has been uh, going down since mm -hmm. then this year. So, it remains to be seen what what they will do to rectify this situation in the coming year. We will be going in for a short break. Uh, we will be back in a few minutes. Welcome back to Off the Print, uh, Kesar Indika. 2021 is now almost over. We have only a few hours left. Unfortunately, we had a disappointing year politically and economically. 2022, well, is just, like I said, a few hours away. How do we get out of this mess now? What are the solutions politically and economically? What do you think, Kesara? I think the government should uh, get its act together and, uh, and also bring everyone into the fold, especially the ministers and the MPs who are within the government ranks, bring everyone together and then also give the correct picture to the country, to the people, come before the people and tell the correct picture, uh, what is wrong and how they are going to rectify it. So that I think will at least to a certain extent instill some confidence in the people. and. Uh, the other issue is uh, the economy. Economy, I mean, this economic crisis, economic I think that's issues one of the have major to be issues some, now. Yes. Those have to be addressed, and how how the cost of living yeah. is to be brought down because that's the main issue that the people are facing. Because they, they need some relief, isn't it, Indika? Because yeah. people have suffered quite a bit in this pandemic. Many have lost yeah. their jobs. So, I what think do you the, see the path uh, forward? Yeah, the way I think the way we have to look at it is, you know, uh, short term, mid term, and long term solutions, right? Okay, the short term you have to look at, okay, how we can, you know, bring down the uh, cost of living, the government, right? And the mid and uh, long term uh, solution should be, how are we going to come up, come out of this crisis, and what are the what are the things we can do? So, the the only thing that comes to my mind is reforms some painful and drastic reforms that we need to do. We have about over 500 odd state-run enterprises. Okay. And out of that, seven enterprises are like making massive losses. So those reforms, those institutions should be reformed because our economy can't take them forward with us. You know, there's no chance. We can't, we can't do that anymore. So those painful reforms have to be done. Even to get IMF to assist us, we need to show that, okay, we are ready for reforms. Because they won't just come and lend you money. That yes. won't happen. Yes. So they will, okay, we, it's, it's, and also that misconception, let me address that misconception as well. People think that, okay, IMF comes and, you know, puts conditions. It is, the, it, is, it is completely the other way. It is that the government of Sri Lanka and the central bank will have to come up with a program. This is our reform program. And get the IMF approval for that. You have to convince the IMF to approve that so they can lend the money. Right. So that is how it happens. So for IMF to lend us money, so we need to do this reform. There's no, no, no way around it. Do you have confidence in the new finance minister, Basil Rajapaksa, in all your years of experience? Uh, what do you think, Indika? It is very unlikely it will happen. It is very unlikely that, because by now, because they had the political capital to do it. Yes. They, they, this government, I think Kesar yeah. would agree with me, they had the political capital to 
you know, at least do part of these reforms. Right. But they didn't. They dilly dally and they didn't do anything. And so, also the last budget, I don't think there were any drastic no. uh, measures taken in that direction. Although the finance minister, to a certain extent, acknowledged that the uh, state sector is yeah. uh, too heavy. Uh, in I the don't same way, he talks about getting 50,000 more people into the, the system, permanent yes. card. So. And also one of the main issues for the inflation and the current, uh, I think, uh, the resultant uh, high cost of living is the, the pumping of uh, liquidity into the market, market. Uh, during the yeah. last uh, one and a half years. Yeah. Because uh, people were given like 5,000 rupees uh, yeah. uh, during so that the is, that support. That is a bad practice that we have been doing for so many years. Yeah. Like when you don't have money, you ask the central bank to print money. That is the easiest way to do it. Correct. When you don't have money. So that should stop. <laughs> Simple as that, that should stop. A quick question to both of you all. Uh, while obviously the government has performed quite disappointingly, what do you think uh, the opposition has done? How do you think the opposition has performed? Because uh, we tend to look, focus only on the blunders of the government and the Rajapaksa family who obviously is ruling the government. But then we also have an opposition leader who's, who seems to be quite silent. Well, we should be fair by the opposition as well because uh, one is they are reeling uh, after uh, uh, quite a disappointing election and a split in the major party yes. and uh, they, they are also getting their act together probably. Uh, but it's but 20, I, I think the, case, right? the opposition should also have been more proactive uh, uh, in its uh, probably constructive criticism. They should have offered uh, more constructive criticism uh, uh, as well. But the, but the thing is, in such a situation, it's limited what the opposition can also do. Uh, so let's see how, how they perform this year. Uh, let me add to that because I can see the JVP and both uh, SJB, they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are sort of, you know, getting ready to come into power. Yes. But uh, the thing is, so far, Nobody has come up with a proper plan for the economy. Nobody. Because even JVP still, they are, they are a wider this thing now, but still they are talking about uh, very similar topics like import substitution, uh, protected industries. It is very clear that those things aren't working. Yeah. Those things aren't working. So we need, because Sri Lanka, we need, we need an economic plan that is based on trade. Okay. That is the only way out for us. Trade, export, trade. So, so far nobody has come up with a plan. So that's, that is why, that is my concern. Okay, uh, after this government, okay. who would come to power and what would be the plan? Okay, Sir Indika, uh, unfortunately, we, since we are short of time, we will have to end the program. But let's just hope and pray that we, uh, Chief Editor of Daily Mirror, Business Editor of uh, Daily Mirror Business. Uh, please let's continue to guide us because we have a lot more to do as we go, uh, go ahead. We have a lot more news to break. So let's just hope that it's a newsy year for all of us. And uh, I wish you all both uh, the very best as well. And I wish you all both a happy new year. We wish everyone a happy yes. new year. <laughs> So that's all we have for you tonight. I will get back to you all again next week with a brand new episode of Off the Print. Good night and goodbye.